Welcome back class. It's good to be with you. We are continuing uh, Ugarte, Militino, and Arnholt 3.4. We're in 3.4.4 moments, page 92 here. And I uh, want to just walk through, kind of like we did on the previous one, except a little bit more quickly, uh, some of the highlights in the reading. Okay, so the first part is called Moments. Now, last section with discrete random variables, we had the expected value. That was one of four properties that were listed, mode, median, percentile, and then expected value, which I also called the mean. Okay, moments are interesting because they form a whole class of properties of random variables, and the expected value is the first and simplest moment. Let me expand here. Okay, uh, we have a definition, the rth moment about the origin. Okay, uh, it's the expected value of x raised to the power r. So when r equals 1, then it's just e of x, and that gives us our first moment. The book is going to call that alpha sub r. I haven't seen that a lot. It's not critical notation. Uh, there's another kind of moment that is the notation is more common. Rth moment about the mean. Okay. Notice the, the other one is about the origin. This one's about the mean. So the first moment is E of x, and it's typically denoted with a mu. Okay, I'll just put that out there. Uh, we're going to see that he subscripts that with a 1. I'm going to omit it for the moment. And so the rth moment about the mean, well, about the mean means x minus mu. Okay? So expectation of x minus mu, uh, if r was 1, then you would just have e of x minus mu. Uh, if r was 2, which is a very, very common case, then that would get you the second moment about the mean. All right. Uh, so for the moment, those are definitions. Now, getting to that second moment about the mean, that is actually called variance. So special name VAR for variance is uh, x minus mu to the second power. Okay, expectation of that. And uh, this is so common, it's given a special name of sigma squared. We call it squared because the second moment. Uh, very often, we will take the square root of sigma squared, and we're going to call that guy standard deviation. Okay, now I'll tell you, standard deviation and variance are going to be our friends. They're going to pop up a lot. Uh, what we have here in equation 3.7 is a shortcut formula for finding variance using uh, the formula. So you can do the definition, but you'll note if you take x minus mu squared, you get this expression. And I'm just going to unpack it a little bit. I, I didn't unpack it all the way. You have e of x squared uh, minus 2x mu. Well, in fact, let's just, uh, using the result from last time, uh, expectation is a linear operator. I take e of x squared minus, okay, that 2 is a constant, so that comes out, e of x mu. Mu is a constant from the standpoint of this operation. So the 2 and the mu come out. So the expectation goes onto the x and then I have plus uh, expectation of mu squared is just mu squared, because again, mu is a constant. Now, uh, let me, I'm just going to have to go equals up again. E of x squared stays. We don't know that in principle. E of x is mu. So now I have minus 2 mu squared plus mu squared. And so that's going to get me e of x squared minus mu squared. 
Okay, which you have right here. And so that's a shortcut formula for finding variance. We will make use of this um, as we go. Now, the variance and standard deviation both have units, just like a mean does. If you're measuring the mean height in inches, then uh, there you go. The variance would be in terms of inches squared, not very useful regarding heights. Standard deviation would be a, a measure of distances from the mean, uh, but square rooted, so it's in terms of inches. That'll turn out to be the more useful number uh, conceptually. Uh, coefficient of variation, as our book points out, is unitless because it takes standard deviation and it divides off the absolute uh, first moment or the mean. And so it gets rid of the units. Again, if I had inches over inches, they would cancel. So it would be unitless. I could compare coefficient of variation of heights with, let's say, the coefficient of variation of the lengths of fingernails. Okay, Clearly, the two are not on the same scale as one another, but when you move to coefficient of variation, then they will go to the same scale. Um, I'll tell you we may not see this again for the rest of the semester because it's just not turned out to be a, a useful thing, even though it sounds nifty when you look at it. Okay, rules of variance. Uh, variance of b equals zero. b is a constant. Okay, uh, variance of a constant times the variable comes out squared. That's something to keep in mind. And then the whole thing here, uh, that's going to drop to zero, and you're going to get the squared. So uh, the, the book gives a little proof here. Check that out. We'll um, take any questions on that in class. What else do we have? OK, now, uh, continuous random variables. So we've looked at the discrete last time. We're moving to continuous now. These are random variables whose possible outcomes and when I say that, I've been a little bit unclear. If you have x, x maps from some sample space, whatever it happens to be, into uh, the reals, OK. So uh, the sample space could be whatever. And then we're moving into reals. This is technically the range. We've got the domain and then the range. But when we think of the PDF and the CDF, we're taking a function of the random variable. Okay, So what we're doing now is we're moving from R, the, that real is right there. So if I, if I may, okay, we're moving that R, it, what was the range of the random variable becomes the domain of the probability function. And it maps onto the interval 0 to 1, yeah. probability. OK. <clears throat> now, for notational purposes, the capital P is going to be for the discrete case. And then the little f is going to be the continuous case. So I'll put that in here. So we'll use little f. OK. And typically, it's it's written in the lower case, as our book is doing here. Uh, but it's going from the values of the random variable onto 0 to 1. OK. Now, <clears throat> for the PDF discrete, it was probability of x less than or equal to x. It still maps reals onto 0, 1. But keep in mind, it's, it's an interesting 0, 1 because it's cumulative. But it's still 0, 1. OK. Uh, for the continuous, the little f scales up to a big F. And the notation there is very intentional, as you might have guessed, to go from 
little f to big F is an integral, whereas here in the discrete it was a sum. Let's take a look. Okay, the three properties uh, we need to be positive. Uh, the, the sum is equal to 1. Okay, I've, I've alluded to that. And then this is something to take note of. The probability that x falls within some interval, okay, is just going to be the integral over the PDF from A to B. Okay, great. So if you want to know the probability from A to B, then you just take the integral of f over that region. Okay, now what's going on with this diagram? Well, this diagram is unnecessary when we're just doing calculus. We just do this, right? Well, that's true, but if you have a cumulative distribution function and you take f of b and you have this function, then actually you get this result and you can subtract it from this result and boom you're done. And so the, the force of it is we, we think in terms of cumulative distribution functions not just an integral from A to B. That, that's typically how these things are going to be done. So that's why I'm explaining that even though in calculus we would tend to just think of it this way. All right, what else? Okay, so the CDF is coming in. And the CDF then, uh, you can write it like this, I guess. I, you don't, typically, we don't write it like that. Better is to just go the integral. Uh, you could put the lowest possible value here, but we tend to think of it as existing on negative infinity to infinity. So it, it's just 0 below some region, then once you hit that starting point, if it, if it turned out to be A, where it becomes non-zero, then whoosh, all the way up to X. And so that is big F of X, okay? just like we saw in Calc 1. Now, uh, it has these properties here. Again, it's 0 to 1, and uh, okay, it's, it's monotonically increasing. Limit is 1 on the right, limit is 0 on the left. OK, that should make sense. And I want to go to the picture immediately. OK, here, here we go. So for this particular PDF, uh, it happens to be non-zero at negative 1 up through 1. Otherwise, 0, 0. OK. Now, when you take its CDF, then we're just going to cumulatively be adding, 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 adding. And this is always what these things look like. It may be steeper, like this. Or you could have more of a you know, gradual one like this. But that's what they look like. They all have that basic shape to them as far as CDFs go. Notice they're no longer stepwise as the discretes were. That's just what they look like. OK, almost done. Almost done. Uh, just a feel here. I'm not going to do the full example. But for part A, I'm trying to get at what are you looking for when you're doing these problems. These problems are not sort of the, the realistic kind of what would you really do. But they're to, to poke into the, the features of what's going on so you can understand them. So for part A, it says find k so that this guy is a PDF. Well, what that means is the integral from negative infinity to infinity has to equal 1. So we just want k such that this is true. That's the task. OK, for B, find the CDF. Okay. CDF, no problem. Uh, the CDF is the integral of the PDF. So. We're just going to do that. Okay, boom. And you can look at that a little lower there. For C, now we actually have something to do. Compute this probability. Well, two ways. You could do the integral from this to this of 
the PDF you found. It's this function with the proper K plugged in from part A. Or you could do the CDF and do the subtraction technique. Okay, and I want you to see there's those two possibilities. Uh, I'll have to look and see what the book did. Then it says graph. Okay, let's so let's take a look. Okay, here's C. It says using the CDF. So here's the CDF. Boom. We're just going to go f of one minus f of point negative point five. And so it's a it's a plug-in. There's no calculus actually to do because we did it here once and for all, so to speak. Okay, that's the power of a CDF. It shows you why we want them. Okay, and last one. Do the functions. Okay, we've already taken a look at them. Um, so the S script is useful. You want to run that, and you kind of want to just have that in your pocket in case you need to replicate it. You can just come and, and copy this code and just modify it. And that covers the properties of random variables. Very important. We'll see PDFs, CDFs, and then their moments all the rest of the course.